Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another story time for you guys and I can't believe I remembered this story because it was totally by chance. So again, without further ado, let's get into the video and let's talk about this amazing story that I remembered. Okay, so basically I was going through some of my old photos that I took in Korea back in 2012. That's when I first came to Korea. I came for one month in the summer. Now, looking back, I would not recommend coming to Korea in the summer because it's just too hot. You got the monsoon season. It's just not the best time to be walking around and taking in all the views. Now, I went back and looked at my photos from that trip and I documented everything. Like I literally took a picture of everything and this is gonna play into the story. And with the plain background, it's gonna come in handy because this is where I'm gonna like insert my receipts, okay? <laughs> so basically, I was here for one month. I took a picture of everything. I wanted to vlog at the same time, but it just didn't work out. So I was taking a picture of everything and throughout my trip, I met up with various friends, Korean friends that I had made in university who were also visiting their families for the summer. And when I told them that I was also going to be in Korea, they were like, hey, let's meet up, like I'll show you around. So with one of my friends, that's exactly what she did. She let me know that, hey, I will get us like tickets to a play that's really popular right now in the theater district known as Taeyangno. And she was saying how this is has been number one for a while. I think it was like since 2010. So it had been two years that it was really popular. And so I was like, yeah, sure, great. Thank you so much. So we went out to eat. We went to a cafe. And then after that, we headed over to the theater. Now, I took a picture of the theater hall back then. I think it's still running and still there now. But it was called Tintin Hall. And I took a picture of it. And then I also took a picture of the cast. So this play was called Oktapang Koyangi. So it's like rooftop cat, rooftop room cat, something like that. And it was adapted into a play. And so I didn't know anything about it prior. That's the first time that I've heard of, I had heard about it. So I took a picture of the cast, but I also zoomed into what I now know and what I probably found out then was the main character. I don't know why I focused on this person and took their picture, but I did. And so I took a picture of them. I took a picture in front of the cast um, poster, and then we made our way inside. I also took pictures there too. I took a picture of the theater and I took a picture of the stage. Now where we were sitting was towards the back. I don't know if my friend, like, let's say made reservations a little too late, but we were towards the back. This will also play into the story. And I also took a picture of the audience and they were mostly couples. So we were two girls coming to see this play amongst a variety of couples. And so um, we watched the play and by then I had been studying Korean in university and like on my own. So I was able to get the gist of the play. It was kind of like a romantic comedy, I think or like a romantic storyline. So it wasn't like really difficult Korean. Cause to this day, like if I watch any dramas that are really specific, let, let's say they deal with law or medicine or crime and they use those specific vocabularies to that genre, then it gets a little bit harder for me. But if it's just like everyday language and kind of like typical situations, then I'm able to get by. So I was able to understand a majority of the play. Um, and when the cat, when the play was over, you had a chance to go up and take a picture with the cast. Now I had my digital camera, so I thought I'd be able to use that to take a picture with the cast, but their staff member was like, no, we take the photos and we upload them on our blog. So please go to the blog to access this photo. And I was like, oh, okay. But we lined up for the pictures. And since we were towards the back, we were like the last group of people to take a picture with the cast. And I remember as soon as the cast finished taking a photo with whoever was ahead of us, they looked at me and obviously I, <laughs> I'm a hijabi, right? But I was super, super dark. You've probably seen in the picture. I was so dark because back then I had, I didn't know anything about the young sun to like the parasol to protect me from the sun's rays. So I got tanned, like I was chocolate. <laughs> so I could see the cast was like, oh, a foreigner? Like, what are you looking? like what? And so they were like, did you understand the show? And I was like, oh, I can speak Korean. They were all shocked. And I remembered the lead guy who I'd taken the picture of kind of like, 
looked at me like, I don't know, it just looked like he was shocked, like he was still processing. Did she just speak in Korean? And if you guys have seen my video where I introduced myself to the high school students, it was that kind of vibe. <laughs> so they were just like, whoa. And then I remember we sat down, take the picture. And then as we were getting up, you know, I turned to them and I was like, oh, I'm doing like, blah, blah, blah. and I could still tell the main guy was like, like, I guess it just didn't compute. <laughs> or maybe I was the first foreigner of like my, my liking to who was in the audience. I don't know. I don't want to put that title on myself, but that's the vibe it was giving. Like he was just like, whoa. And now that I know his background, I think it makes sense. But anyways, so yeah. So I told my friend, I was like, Hey, can we please get that picture from the blog? And she was like, yeah, no problem. Long story short, I was never able to get that photo from the blog of us with the cast and with this specific person who's now super famous, <laughs> which is so unfortunate. My husband is really good at finding things online. And so when I tasked him to try to find my photo from back then, he was able to see that they still, the play is still running. They still do photo times with the cast. And he went back and back and back. And all these photos only go back till 2015, which is still a long time ago, but just two years prior, there are no traces of these photos. And so I just don't understand. Like we got so close, but I couldn't find it. But the fact that they still take photos with the cast, I feel like proves my point that I did take a photo with this cast and this interaction did happen, but I have no solid proof of that moment itself. So Take my word for it, if you will. But yeah, it's just so frustrating. The reason I didn't realize that this person was now a famous actor was because when I had looked them up originally, they came up. I think they just played like a small role as like a soldier and it was like moon embracing the sun. So that's where I was like, oh, I watched that drama. But even if I tried to find him there, like he's just playing the role of a soldier. So it's not something that I could go ahead and find. But after that, he ended up being in Konjiam, which was that like psychiatric hospital horror movie. And then recently he was in The Glory as well as Queen of Tears. So that's when I was like, wait, what? Now I was late to The Glory Train because it dealt with you know, the topic of bullying and also had like real stories adapted and put into the drama. I just didn't feel comfortable watching it because I'm the type of person who sometimes I just want to watch dramas to like escape from my reality and just feel good. I don't, I don't like delving into those serious topics. I've always said like life is already stressful enough. I just want to be able to like relax and forget about, you know, what's going on. But when I, after I gave birth and I was back at home, I had the Toumi, which is the service that Korea um, provides where a helper, like a midwife kind of person will come to your house and like cook you meals and help you take care of the baby, like do household chores and things like that. So she noticed that I was watching Goblin because I love Goblin. Like no matter how many times it's on rerun, if I, if I come across it on TV, like I will watch it. It's just, it holds a special place in my heart. So I <laughs> I was watching that and she was letting me know, like, did you know the writers of this drama also wrote The Glory? And I was like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, and it's really good. You should watch it. And I was like, yeah, but it deals with bullying. Like, I really don't want to watch that. She's like, I know, but it's really good. So I ended up watching it then. And so she was right. Like, although this, it was intense, I really did like it. And I really disliked the main guy. I don't remember his name, but if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. So I just didn't like him and I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I just didn't like him. So he made an impression on me and I was like, oh my God, I can't stand him. Then I ended up just wanting to watch Queen of Tears to see what the hype was about. A lot of people said it was better than Crash Landing on You. I don't know if I agree with that, but I went ahead and watched it and he was also in that drama as the supporting character, main lead, love interest, slash pa whatever <laughs> character he was but I was like oh my god that's the guy that was in the glory so he's he I feel like he's being typecasted these days to like only play the evil characters but he's also going to be in squid game too and I, I'm not saying his name specifically because I still even though I'm this is a positive story I just I'm traumatized by defamation laws in Korea and being sued so I just prefer not to say the name but you guys will know if you've seen it you know so after I looked him up again a couple days ago, when I had seen my old photos, I was like, 
he looks familiar. Let me look him up again. So I looked him up again and I was like, oh my God, because he kind of looks a little different from that photo that I first took of him and what I remembered. So I was like, oh my goodness, like who would have thought that he was the guy from the glory and queen of tears? What? So I was literally so shocked. So I was like, oh my God, I have to share this story with you guys because who would have thought that I would have seen him during his rookie days when he was just getting back into acting and he auditioned for this role. There were a thousand applicants and he was one of the guys that were chosen. And that day, sorry, going back to the day of the showing, there were two showings of this play, the five o'clock showing and the eight o'clock showing. The five o'clock showing has the one actor from Penthouse who got in trouble for the dreads and stuff. (laughs) He was the five o'clock showing and then the eight o'clock showing was this guy. So it was crazy that like they were both a part of this. The reason also I wanted to tell the story time is just, it just reminded me of something recently where I've been getting a lot of messages from people who really want to move to Korea and really show a great interest in moving here. And I feel like with social media and their generation is just totally different from mine. Like I came here when I was 25, turning 26. So I feel like I was a lot more mature, but now that group of people who are into Korea are a lot younger, like they're getting younger and younger. I feel like some of them, not all of them have a distorted view of Korea or they're like really just a little in too deep. So I just wanted to remind people like, it's okay to have interests and hobbies and be interested in these actors and singers and all that. But just like remember at the end of the day that these are real people. And sometimes you find out stuff about them that will just make you upset that you invested all this time into these celebrities who at the end of the day are just human. So even though I have this story and I'm like fangirling, at the end of the day, like I don't know this person. I don't know what type of person they are behind the scenes, but it's just... Yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys, you know, to be careful and when you're making decisions about your life, like make sure that you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket and investing in something that might not work out. It's okay to chase your dreams, but also like have a plan B, plan C, plan D, like just always have a backup plan. All of this to say that, you know, it's okay to watch dramas and like K-pop and all of that, but just don't get immersed in it to the point that you get sucked into this illusion of these people being more than just humans, okay? Just take it at face value and don't invest too much. That's my little lesson or tidbit that I wanted to add at the end of this video. I hear baby crying, so I'm gonna head out now, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this story. And yeah, let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys, and young 다음에 또 봐요.